It had been a winter of discontent and not just within the F1 world. The US and UK were both in the throes of a nasty recession, the Yorkshire Ripper had been arrested in January and the full details of his crimes were being reported endlessly in the British press, and of course in December John Lennon had been shot and killed in New York. Tributes continued to flood the music charts with Roxy Music's cover of Jealous Guy at the top spot in the UK and a re-release of Imagine at number one in Canada, but at least the fees of folk conflict seemingly over, or at least put on hold, Racing fans had something to look forward to as the teams arrived in Long Beach, California. Colin Chapman had always been one of F1's great innovators and now Lotus debuted their revolutionary new Lotus 88 in Friday's practice. It was an innovative design concept with an outer wraparound chassis attached to the suspension, providing a ground effect without being attached to the main chassis and thereby subject to the ban on skirts. The car was approved by the scrutineers and ran on Friday, but before Saturday practice a protest from the other teams was upheld and the team had to resort to the conventional Lotus 81 for qualifying in the race. Elio De Angelis, who'd driven the new car, was not terribly impressed by it anyway, deeming it undrivable on the bumpy street circuit. Qualifying saw Alan Jones trading fastest laps with surprise package Riccardo Petrezzi in the Arrows, and in the end it was the Italian's orange car which sat on pole, the first for both him and the team. The two Williams cars of Jones and Reutemann were second and third, with Piquet's Brabham, Villeneuve's Ferrari and Andretti's Alfa Romeo making up the top six. Nigel Mansell started his first full season well in seventh. Tyrrell were running two local drivers in Eddie Cheever and Kevin Cogan. The former qualified well in eighth place, but Cogan became the first driver ever to fail to qualify in a works Tyrrell. He was accompanied on the pit wall for the race by both March drivers, the Azella of Puero and Siegfried Storr's Arrows, a contrast to Petrezzi's heroics. Start, Gilles Villeneuve got a flyer in the floor and briefly took the lead, but outbraked himself into Queen's hairpin and dropped a fourth. Further back, De Cesaris misjudged breaking into the same corner and ran into the back of Prost's Renault, which collected Hector Ribaki's Brabham on its way into the wall. De Cesaris and Prost were out on the spot, but Ribaki was able to limp back to the pits for new tyres. Petrezzi led the Williams pair, with Villeneuve keeping a watching brief ahead of Piquet and the second Ferrari of Didier Peroni. Peroni managed to get past both to go third, but the Frenchman began holding up a queue of traffic. On lap 17, PK finally got past, and Ferrari's misery was compounded when Villeneuve went out with a broken drive shaft. Eight laps later, Reutemann finally bullied his way past Petrezzi, and shortly the Arrows car's fuel system gave up the ghost, and the Italian's fine drive was over. Reutemann now led teammate Alan Jones by several seconds, but the Australian world champion began reeling him in by half a second per lap. A lot of speculation about team orders requiring Reutemann to move aside for Jones was about to be answered. Except it wasn't. Reutemann slid wide, lapping Mark Sierra's ensign, and Jones nipped through and began pulling out, while Reutemann was also stretching out a lead over PK's Brabham. The race leaders settled in to clock off the laps, but there were still battles going on further down the order. Jacques Lafitte's Ligier and Eddie Cheever's Tyrrell were scrapping over a points finish when the Frenchman ran into the back of the Tyrrell just after the pit lane entrance. Lafitte was out with an irreparably bent nose while Cheever limped back round to the pits, but just as he moved across to take the exit, Bruno Giacomelli approached from the Alfa Romeo and tried to take Cheever and the backmarking ATS of Jan Lammers on the inside. As soon as he realised Cheever was trying to pit, he attempted to bail out of the move, but collided with the ATS and both were out. Chiva lost fifth place to Andretti, but was then promoted when Peroni's Ferrari sprang an oil leak, only to lose second gear while overtaking. Bit of a problem on the street circuit. Alan Jones took the win, his second in a row, and the third consecutive Williams 1-2 by nine seconds, with Nelson Piquet third in the Brabham. Mario Andretti took a popular fourth place in his first race for Alfa Romeo, while fellow homeboy Eddie Chiva dragged his Tyrrell across the line for fifth. Patrick Tombe picked up the last point for Theodore on the team's debut, and Chico Serra in the Fittipaldi and René Arnoux's damaged Renault were the last classified finishers in 7th and 8th.